strategy to approach Euclidean geometry writers. So I've always wondered why they call them writers. But in this tutorial, this is what we're going to work on. We're going to just show a quick short way that you can always use whenever you're working on Euclidean geometry sketches. Hi guys, Levi here from Bright Young Brains. So with Euclidean geometry questions, the one big issue is it is very difficult for you to just jump into a question without like a strategy or a system that you know works. So with the system that we're going to showcase here, it is quite famous and it also has its own acronym. It's called Dr. Cape Town. So uh, I think you may have heard of it or something like that. But with Dr. Cape Town, this is the acronym you want to remember. D-R-C-P-T. Dr. Cape Town. Cape Town. <laughs> so anyways, with Dr. Cape Town, the one thing is each of these letters represent one specific thing about circles and Euclidean geometry. So firstly with D, D refers to diameter. So whenever you have a Euclidean geometry question, whatever your sketch looks like, you want to look out for a diameter first. The reason is the moment you look out for a diameter, you will be able to remember this theorem. This theorem says that a diameter of a circle subtends an angle of 90 degrees, or rather, an angle subtended by the diameter of a circle is equal to 90 degrees. So this is theorem 3. There we go. The R stands for radius, in the sense that whatever Euclidean geometry sketch that you'll be given, you need to look for a diameter first, think of this theorem, and the next you need to look out for your radius, or a radiuses, or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> so when you think of your radiuses, the one thing that should come to mind, theorem two, because theorem two states that an angle at the center of a circle will always be double an angle at the circumference. Now the issue is this angle that will be at the center of your circle. We know that these two lines here will always be the radius of your circle. And apart from just remembering this law, we know that whenever we have a radius, we need to look out for an isosceles triangle somewhere in our sketch. Because remember, with an isosceles triangle, you have base angles that will be equal to each other because your lines there from the center of your circle will be equal because they are red eye. They are both the radius of your circle. So that's what R stands for, radius. C stands for cyclic quads. Now with cyclic quads, we know that Opposite angles will be supplementary, and we also know that an exterior angle of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the opposite interior angle there. So when you think of D, diameter, R, radius, C, cyclic quads, your brain is already like working in terms of trying to feed information to you so that you'll be able to answer your Euclidean geometry question. So that's what C does. P refers to parallel lines and i hope i spelled parallel correctly i think parallel has one r yeah that maybe looks better so yeah spelling and i <laughs> anyway so p stands for parallel lines and whenever we think of parallel lines we will obviously need to remember fun f for corresponding angles u for co-interior angles and then n for alternating angles so that's what the p will help you remember or that's what you need to look out for. T, you can almost guess it. T refers to tangents. So we know that with tangents we have quite a few theorems. So one that you would be remembering is this theorem here. This theorem states that the radius of your circle will always meet a tangent at an angle of 90 degrees. Another tangent law is theorem 9, the famous 10 chord theorem. And then another tangent law is theorem 8, which states that 
tangents from the same point are equal in length. So you can clearly see that Dr. Cape Town is somewhat useful because it will help you keep in mind that D, you need to think of diameters. And then when you think of diameters, you think of theorem three. And then R, you need to think of your radius lines. And then those will help you remember this theorem and things like an isosceles triangle there. And then C, we said cyclic quads. You have quite a few laws on cyclic quads. P, parallel lines that will help you remember things like fun. And then T, we know that represents tangents. And you can see we have three theorems that basically deal with tangents. So with Dr. Cape Town, this will help you remember what to do or what to look out for in a Euclidean geometry question. So let me just write up there. So I hope this method heals your marks. <laughs> you know what I mean. I mean that in a nice way. So catch you in the next tutorial.